difference, including me, but there you are. Now, a lot of you have written also wanting to know how I got into Lost in Space. Would you like to hear that? Yes. That's a My then agent, whose name escapes me at the moment, <laughs> rang up one day and said, Irwin Allen is doing a series at 20th Century Fox called Lost in Space. And he wants to see film on you. Let me explain what that means. The great producers and directors in Hollywood, who have totally no vision or imagination, <laughs> do not trust themselves to hire anybody unless they have seen you on a piece of film. They want to make sure that you can walk and talk and not trip over the camera tables. They also want to make sure that somebody else has paid you before they take a chance. So it's lovely in La La Land. They are just at any rate, I have always been loath to show film because you never know what the hell they're looking for. And if you show the wrong film, you blow the tar. And I've really almost never done that unless I was totally certain that the part in the piece was the part that I had on this film. So I said to the agent, what is the part? And that dummy said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I said, all right. Will you tell Mr. Allen that I hesitate to show him the wrong film, but I would be delighted to show him the real thing, me? And he said, uh, he's not going to like that. And I said, tough, followed by another word. <laughs> Twenty minutes later, the phone rang. Irwin Allen wants to know who the hell you think you are, and I'll see you at four o'clock. <laughs> Point battle one. I never met Alan, by the way. I heard of him. So I got myself gussied up. And I went off to 20th Century Fox, my favorite movie studio. I had done my first television series, The Third Man, with the dear dead friend Michael Rennie. And I always loved 20th Century Fox. He was a big movie star studio, and I am so starstruck, and I've always been all my life. I was always beside myself every moment I was on the lot. So I said hello to a few old friends, like the guy at the gate, and I found Irwin's uh, office in the building. And I went in, and oh my god, I see it now. It was a Technicolor office. All the walls were huge billboards and placards of violent color. It was really an assault to the eyes. I uh, told the secretary who I was. And she said, just a moment, and finally I was ushered in to the presence. And there he sat, surrounded by the yes men, about 20, the yay sayers, the yes, Mr. Allen, they all got them. The head man of this group was a quite nice man named Frank Lock Tourette. So I walked in, I knew I looked well, I was wearing the expensive jacket and all that sort of thing. And I said, good afternoon, Mr. Allen. And he said, I have total recall, by the way. And he said, who the hell do you think you are, no film? <laughs> and I said, Mr. Allen, I hesitate to show you the wrong film. I really prefer to show you the real thing, me. And he said, what are they saying, La Tourette? <laughs> La Tourette said, he says he doesn't want to show you the wrong film. He wants to show you the real person, him. And Irwin said, Oh. <laughs> then he said, you want to be in this series? And I said, well, I am uh, interested if we can make a proper deal. What did he say about Frank? <laughs> and Frank said, he says he's interested if he can make a deal. And Irwin said, oh. <laughs> Then he turned to the casting man, who was also in the office, Joe D. Augusta, a lovely man, and I said, all right, sign him and don't pay him too much. <laughs> a situation which I quickly changed, you may be sure. <laughs> then he said, what about Billy? Well, let me explain what that dreadful word is. It's a very important word, building. It's how you build on the screen whether you're first, second, third, what size type, are you the other one? We actors have always made an issue of that. 
When I say we actors, I mean those actors. Myself, I would willingly sacrifice going, I want the money. <laughs> That's what I want. So I said, what about billing? He said, I've already signed six or seven actors. They're all contracted. The billing is in the contract, and you have to be the last one on the call. So I said very gently, may I ask who the other actors are? And he told me, well, dear friends, I have to tell you in all due modesty that in that group of lovely people, and at that time, I had this intelligence stature. I really did. I was very hot, very nice. And I said, Mr. Allen, that poses a problem. These are all lovely people whom I admire. But in this group, I'm afraid I've got to be top kick. He said, oh, no, the question are already contracted signs here and delivered. I said, well, let me make my position quite plain. I'm afraid I will have to have some special billing. Why don't you say Aunt Durant? <laughs> well, Aunt Durant said he wants special billing. Oh. Well, he said, go home and think about it. Pure urban. I knew I had a job, by the way. I knew it. Oh, we hadn't even talked money. That happens with agents. So I went home and I thought, really, what to do? Ethically, morally, and professionally, I would not dream of interfering with other people's health. I mean, it's simply not done if you're a professional actor. These people were signed to have certain buildings, not even by Williams and down the line. But I suspect I've got to have special buildings of some kind. I'm special, special building. Special guest star. Jonathan Harris, every week, has that ever been done in a series? Hmm. I called a dear friend of mine at NBC, he was head of casting, and I said, to your knowledge, has there ever been special guest star building every week for a regular running member of the cast? And he said, you've got to be kidding, who would ever give a building like that? I've never given a building like that. I said, thank you. <laughs> I said, I've solved your billing problem. How, he said. I said, I will appear at the end of the crawl on a separate car with separate music, <laughs> special guest star, Jonathan Harris. He screeched, what? People will think you won't be coming back every week. And I said, trust me. <laughs> and the rest is history.